This is, uh, these are the National Comprehensive Cancer Center guidelines, um, kind of outlining what I had just said um, in those last slides. For low grade, you could either, and it's a low grade, low risk, you could do observation or you could give chemotherapy um, in the bladder right after the surgery. And that's gemcitabine or mitomycin. Um, if it is a, still a TA, but it's high grade, you could do BCG or an alternative option is chemotherapy, or you could observe. And then for T1 high grade, we would usually look again um, and repeat the procedure where we biopsy your bladder and then go on to do BCG, or in some cases, rarely recommend removing your bladder depending on the factors I discussed earlier. And what about how often do we need to be looking um, in your bladder? So if you had low grade, we usually would do uh, look in your bladder three months after we removed that first tumor. And then we would look again somewhere between six to nine months later. And then we would look every year for five years. Um, you wouldn't need additional CT scans um, in low grade cancer. And then for the intermediate risk people, we would uh, look in three months and then we would look three months later. And then after that, about every six months, we do a cystoscopy just in our clinic, not in the operating room, nothing like that. And then once a year for five years. For the high risk people, um, we typically look every three months for two years and then every six months for five years and then and once a year. Um, so like I said, you're kind of with a urologist for a long time. Those are uh, all the staging uh, and risk groups that we just addressed, and I will now talk about the chemotherapy. So this is chemotherapy that is given inside the bladder. Um, so it is uh, given through a catheter. It's instilled into your bladder, and then uh, we would ask you to try to hold it for around two hours or so. Um, this chemotherapy is given for low-grade bladder cancer. Um, and you can see a list of examples. I would say the most common one used today are either gemcitabine or mitomycin, and they directly kill the cells um, that could be floating in the urine. It reduces the risk of the cancer coming back, but it doesn't reduce the risk of it progressing. It just specifically reduces the risk of cancer coming back. And um, here are the ways that this can be given. And one of the common ways is that after you have a bladder tumor removed, while you're still asleep, we put in a catheter, we put the medicine in, and then um, you wake up and we take the catheter out and you go to the restroom. Um, and that can reduce the risk of it coming back if there are multiple tumors by, by up to 56%. Um, in some cases, if you've had a low-grade cancer come back again, um, or it is a bigger low-grade cancer, then we might recommend that you do it weekly for six weeks, and that reduces the risk of, of it coming back somewhere between 14 and 38%. Um, the major side effects of these are uh, feeling like you have to pee more frequently, more urgently. In some cases, it can uh, shrink your bladder size and, and permanently in some cases, and it can sometimes cause um, skin irritation if it gets on your skin uh, during the administration. The two major ones, like I spoke about, are mitomycin and gemcitabine. Um, gemcitabine is a newer one, um, and it seems to be tolerated a little bit better uh, than mitomycin, and so I tend to favor that if it is available. Uh, this is just the article for your reference that kind of uh, tested gemcitabine and what they did is they tested that medication versus just a saline salt water medication. And what they found was um, a lower risk of recurrence in the group of people who got the gemcitabine and very few complications and that it was pretty well tolerated. Those, um, that covers the intravesical chemotherapy, so the treatment option for low-grade type of cancer. Now we'll talk about uh, BCG therapy. So BCG is given for high-grade uh, tumors and still remains kind of the gold standard for what we have for this type of cancer. Um, BCG is actually a type of tuberculosis that is given in the bladder through a catheter and it activates your immune system to basically fight and attack the abnormal um, bladder lining. And 
it works uh, well for high grade tumors and carcinoma in situ. Usually we wait to give BCG for about four to six weeks after your bladder biopsy or TURBT um, because the bladder wall needs to be healed. And then we would give it once a week for six weeks. And after that six weeks, about a month later, we like to look in the bladder and make sure that everything has stayed um, or responded appropriately. Um, if it has not, and it is still a non-invasive type of cancer, we can try doing an additional six week treatment with BCG. And about 20 to 25% of the time um, in patients who BCG did not work the first time, um, BCG actually works 20 to 25% of the time the second attempt. And so it often is worth trying again. Um, and if BCG works, then we would do this therapy three months after your initial treatment, six months after your initial treatment, and then every six months. Um, this is referring to that maintenance BCG, assuming it has worked. Um, we often try to give this for up to one to three years, about every six months, and it would be three treatments those times. Um, this reduces the risk of recurrence, um, and it also reduces the risk of progression. So both recurrence and progression are affected by this. BCG is especially effective for carcinoma in situ, um, and up to 30% of people can, with carcinoma in situ can have no cancer come back at 10 years after the BCG treatment. Um, and people who don't respond, it is not so good. And so we need to identify that pretty quickly. And we would do that by looking in your bladder and sending off cells from your urine. The side effects of BCG, um, there are a number of them that can occur. Um, within 48 hours of BCG, the kind of common side effects that you may have feeling like you have to pee more frequently, urgently, some burning with urination, sometimes blood in the urine. And some people uh, have this feeling like they've had a flu, flu shot and just kind of feel fatigue. Um, for if those are the symptoms, we tend to say that is okay. We can continue the BCG medicine, um, take Tylenol, take ibuprofen, and we often can prescribe medications for bladder spasms and burning. If um, these symptoms don't improve, we can reduce the dosage of BCG. Um, we don't like to go below about a third of the normal dose though. More severe side effects can happen. Um, and if they are kind of persisting over 48 hours after the BCG, then we would consider checking your urine to make sure you don't have an infection. If you had a high fever, then we would probably recommend you coming into the hospital. Um, and if it is a high fever, um, you, you may not be able to receive future BCG, but that's something we would kind of assess on a case-to-case -case basis. This is just a, a general algorithm of uh, what I have talked about already. So there's kind of different categories of people. There's people who are low risk to progress, meaning low risk for things to grow deep into the bladder. And those people have, may have a risk of things coming back. If it, they only have low grade cancer once, we may uh, just watch or give medicine in the bladder. If they have something come back multiple times and it's still low grade, then we would do the chemotherapy in the bladder. And if they have a high risk type of cancer or it's likely to come back and progress, then we give the BCG medicine. So we've talked uh, briefly about BCG and next we're gonna go to what if BCG doesn't work? So there are a lot of uh, exciting options for this that are emerging. Um, truthfully, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, high grade disease can be really frustrating as it tends to come back and it tends to also progress. And so for people who BCG didn't work, even the second course of BCG, we can talk about a bunch of options. Um, one option is to undergo a cystectomy or bladder removal. Um, and that is kind of the tried and, and true option. We know it's effective, but there are a number of options that allow you to spare your bladder that are kind of emerging. And these include gemcitabine and docetaxel, um, BCG plus interferon, 
uh, pembrolizumab, which is a newer immunotherapy that's given in systemically, so in an IV. And then there are a bunch of exciting trials that I'll just briefly touch on a few of them before we end. Um, so why is cystectomy kind of recommended um, in some of these patients? We know that if you have a high amount of T1, so cancer into the lining right before the muscle, that about 50% of people might actually have muscle invasive disease when we take out the bladder. And so for people who have recurrent high grade T1 and there's a lot of it, um, or there's that special type of cell that the pathologist sees that's abnormal, we may recommend removing the bladder because we certainly don't wanna miss a muscle invasive type of bladder cancer. But there are a number of groups that have looked at um, giving other medications such as gemcitabine docetaxel. It's a combination of two medicines that's again given in the bladder. And what they found was for people who BCG didn't work, um, about 60% of patients who were treated with this um, had no cancer coming back at one year and 46% had no cancer coming back at two years. Um, ultimately, about 15% of the people went on to have their bladder removed, um, but it did allow them a few years in, before re requiring that. And so this is something that could be done if BCG hasn't worked prior to going into removing the bladder. Another uh, mouthful is, in, is natopharyngine for Radnovec, and that is um, called by in short Instiladrin. And what this is, is it's a, actually a type of virus um, that is instilled into the bladder the same way BCG is given. And it was given uh, for people, again, with who BCG did not work. Um, and what they found was a, quite, a, 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 again, a good effect with um, about 50, for 3% of patients with the carcinoma in situ having a good response and no cancer um, at follow-up. And then around 72% with the high grade TA or T1 having a good response. Overall, one year out from getting this medication, 30% of people had no cancer that had come back. So this is another option that is a little harder to find and not quite yet out there as widely available as the gemcitabine and docetaxel. And lastly, um, that is pembrolizumab. This is a medication that instead of given in, giving in the bladder, it's actually given through an IV, like a, and it's an immunotherapy. Um, and this was tested in people and evaluated in people with carcinoma in situ and high grade bladder cancer that hadn't responded to BCG. Overall, um, it was, relatively well tolerated with a, a complete response rate of 41%, again, in people who BCG had not worked. But the difference with this, and I, it's important patients know, is that it's a systemic medication. And so you have more systemic side effects uh, like diarrhea, fatigue, rash, and things like that. Um, so we just covered the refractory disease. And lastly, I will talk about some um, ongoing emerging therapies. Um, so one that is ongoing is uh, BCG medicine combined with a special uh, thing that can make BCG work a little better. And it's given similar to BCG in the bladder and it's administered uh, once a week for six weeks. And then you can continue on on uh, maintenance therapy if it has worked. Uh, and it is a uh, pretty promising and we're pretty excited about that. Um, so th there are some sites that are still enrolling patients in this. And so that's an option for BCG uh, disease that hasn't responded to BCG. Um, one other um, trial that is currently enrolling is um, again for people who the BCG did not work. Um, and it is, there's three options for this trial, um, three different things you could receive. One is you could receive a medicine simil similar to pembrolizumab in an IV um, to reduce the risk of it, of it coming back in immunotherapy. The other is a medication that is actually given in the bladder and it's this little pretzel. The pretzel is put in your bladder with a normal cystoscopy like you would have in clinic. And that pretzel contains gemcitabine and slowly lets the gemcitabine chemotherapy out over time. 
um, rather than having it just given to you once a week for six weeks. And so that is the other option for treatment in this trial. And then the last option is you could receive that or combine that with an immunotherapy. And again, this is currently enrolling in various places. And this is by no means a comprehensive list, uh, just two that I, I have, um, am aware of. So ask around um, to your urologist. There are things that are out there for um, patients who BCG has not worked. And in conclusion, I just think that it's really important that those risk categories of low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk be considered because that is what goes on um, in how we determine how best to treat you. Um, I do think there is still the role for um, timely cystectomy, removing the bladder if BCG is continuing to not work, although it's a big surgery, really does have the best outcomes. Um, and I think the exciting thing is that there are a bunch of options and that everything is rapidly changing and expanding. So uh, although BCG um, may not work in some cases, there are a lot of options that do.